Hello, good day, and welcome back. So this is going to be the last section in chapter 10, in which we're going to be talking about the I.O. writer for now. And in this example, what we're going to do to close out this chapter is just one more example, but a little bit more complicated than what we're doing so far. And the intent here is to turn, implement the I.O. writer for person. Before, we didn't implement I.O. writer for person. We implement I.O. writer for other name types, and like you know the um average age tracker was a name type and we implement io writer for it um we might have taken we took a person and then you know turned their age into a byte and then pass that to io writer but no we actually want to say i have a person i want to implement the io writer for it and therefore i should be able to pass so called person object that write and pass it a slice of bytes and if those slice of bytes somehow represent a person, I can turn those slice of bytes into a valid person. And so before I keep talking and probably confuse you, let's see um, how to implement this. But let me just say one more thing. Now, this is not really contrived because what can happen is that you might want to, you might have somebody who have some person object. And remember I said, let's say for the age tracker, um, you were reading that from a file or over the network. Well, the way that would come in is as a stream of bytes or a slice of bytes or a string of bytes. And so somebody would have to take a person object and turn that into some byte representation, send that over the wire to you or put it in a file. Then you would have read it and now you have to turn that back into a person. So we're going to see in this section how to turn those stream of bytes into a person. We're not going to see how to take a valid person and turn them into bytes yet because that's going to be the IO reader. Um, implementation which we're going to do in the next chapter and it, towards the end of the next chapter. But now we're going to assume that this is done for us. We read it out of the network and we're going to take the size of byte. So let's just jump right in. So um, let me save that. And then here, same thing. I'm going to start sort of somewhat with the code that we had from before, but I'm going to get rid of some of the things we don't need. So let's put this up here and open it. And we need more space, right? And what I'm going to do is again zoom in just a little bit, a tad bit. And so we have um, person object, and let's make it a little bit more complicated by having a social security number, which is also a string. So we have a third field. I don't need age average or type because I'm not dealing with any other type other than this. And I'm not going to sort of worry about any creating any person object because we don't have that. What instead, what we're trying to do is get a person from byte. So this is implementation of implement, implement PLE MENT AT implementation of IO that writer implementation person that okay of IO writer that seems good enough for me. Right, whether this should be lowercase, uppercase, is I'll title in, but okay, so that's fine. Um, so implementation of person, ah, okay, so I'm not gonna fuss over the name too much, and so yep, let's um, sort of get rid of most of this for now, okay, and so. I want to say that I have a, it's like I said, some bytes that represent a person. So I already have that byte here and I want to put it here and I'm going to explain the format of this byte. Again, this byte represents a person that's been serialized. So the format for a byte that a person has been serialized, if we look at it, if you wanted to take this and turn it into a string of bytes, we can say is well, the first field here is a name. And so I should probably just grab the length of the um, name, how many bytes characters are in the name, um, and stick it in, you know, in a front in some buffer and then loop through the characters or the bytes and then um, you know add that to the buffer. All right, that's one way. So the first field in this buffer, so if we had to look at the format of the buffer, the buffer format, the first field would be um, length of name, name length, let's call it. 
that 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 would be name length. The next field would be bytes of name, right? And then the next one, well, it looks like the age. So we know age is not going to be anything greater than 255. We're doing unsigned. So we could check if it's, you know, greater than 127 if we want. But we know it's at least um, uh, unsigned 8 int is the same size as in, in terms of byte, 8 bits. So that's just going to be the age as a byte. And then again, we repeat the same thing we did here for encoding a string by saying we get how many um, bytes are in the string. So this is social security name length. And then we're going to stick in here the bytes of the you know social security number. And so this is going to be the format of our um, of so on bytes that we, we take we, we need to read okay to represent the thing. So if we kind of apply that format here, we have one byte and so if we stick the size, well we know everything is, is sort of bytes but anyway, so this is a byte and then comma that you could say this is a, is a slice of bytes, right? or a set of bytes, comma, and yeah. Okay, so let me format that differently. All right, so the format of this thing is that, followed by that, and then age is also a byte, followed by string length, social security number length, which is also a byte. And so what I'm saying here is, if you think about it, is that, uh, let me finish typing this before I make a mistake. And this is also a slice of bytes, right? Or a set of bytes. All right, so what I'm saying is that, and then, blah, blah. all right. So what I'm saying is that, no, I don't expect, so in terms of the length, we know that this value can be more than 255. And that's fine. I don't expect anybody's name to be more than 255 characters, far less, essentially. And social security number, the format of the social security number we're going to accept is the US format of social security number, which is three digit, uh, dash, two digit, and four digits. So if you count that up, that's, you know, 11 characters, right? Um, um, or 11 bytes, really, uh, if you want, because um, we can use a byte to represent those, blah, 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 UTF eight or you know ascii encoding right so um i gotta warn you though that oh this may work differently if you're writing in a different um language other than like you know english or something so um definitely pay attention to that so okay so if i can imagine a buffer like this encoded this way i can imagine that oh i can just sort of read those things back or even take a existing person and follow this rule to make it into this. And so if we use that here, we can imagine this is the first byte, which would be how many, how long is the, how many bytes in this thing are, it makes up the, the name. And so this is telling me there are five. So I can safely say that these five bytes here are gonna be from the name. And then the next, um, thing after the name is a byte that represents the person's age and so this person is 35 and then the next byte is how many um, byte you know the number of um, correct bytes for the social security number this is always going to be 11 so we can choose if we are actually going to encode this ascent over the wire instead of this always being 11 and sending 11 we might choose that though we might want to save a byte especially if we have to send thousands and thousands and even millions of users we might choose that hey one byte might not seem like a whole lot but if you're doing this um over the network and maybe over um gsm you might want to save the user the download cost and so you save a byte so um keep that in mind but for now we're gonna um leave it here okay all right, so, um, well, you know what? Let's go ahead and do that. Since we know this is always 11, why send unnecessary information? So this is gonna be, you know, we know it's gonna be an array of 11 bytes. So uh, let's take this out. And so we're not gonna transmit that. 
And so let's now imagine that I read this off the network or from a file and put it in this um, variable called data. And so now the question is, how can we turn this into a person? So here we had this function called h to byte. Um, we don't need this h tracker thing. So I'm going to get rid of that. And so um, let's have a printout for our, a nice printout for our person object here. We're going to implement that. And we're going to say sprintf. And we're going to put person. And we're going to say name colon percent v, h colon percent v. So security number colon percent v. And then we're going to return that. And here we're going to just print out um, p that name, p that age, and then p that social security number. Okay. And so if we were to create a person like var um, p is equal to some person, and then we were to do fmt that print line, for example, and pass p, um, of course, let's print out our, our data just to um, FMT that print line so we don't get an error, so data. Um, and now, let's let that save. Um, okay, now let's run go run main. Uh, we should see our data, and then person, of course, is empty because we, you know, we just created a person object, we didn't initialize it. What we would like to really to be able to say is p that write, and this would tell us that though we've implemented the and then pass data because if we, we if data which is a slice of byte we can pass it here then we have implemented the writer interface for person and of course it returns the number of bytes that were written and we're going to ignore that and all we're interested in is if there was an error okay and so we're going to do fmt that fmt that print f and so we're going to say um, error um, percent v and then um, we can just do percent V, new line, and then so we have the error, and we can print out um, the P that um, was no, it should be populated with um, this data into P. So let's just see if oh that would work. So we have this now. So if we're going to implement the writer interface, we need to implement this write function that takes a slice of bytes and return n and int, and then err from error, right? The error type interface, right? And so if everything went fine or works correctly, then we want to be able to return the length of um, p, which is this slice of byte that we get here, and nil to say that oh, there wasn't any error, OK? and here, I'm not going to use P, I'm going to use R to mean receiver. But since we intend to modify the receiver, we of course know that this has to be a pointer. All right, so I'm going to comment this out now. And so this code should be able to run correctly without any error. Oh, um, da -da 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 -da. Um, so what is it saying? Undefined ERR 32 and 33. Uh, 32 and 33. Ah, I need colon equal. Um, good. Or I could use var instead, but okay, colon equal, I like the short end. And so again, this run perfectly fine. Uh, I don't like my person here. I made some mistake, P-E-R-S-O-N, and I forget the closing parentheses over there. And so let's rerun it again. And there we go. So this is looking much better now. Hey, that didn't save yet. Okay, so this is looking much better. Okay, so now let's start implementing. All right, what does it mean to take this slice of bytes here and turn it into a person. Like we said, the first one, first value here represents the, how many bytes goes into the string for the name. But before we can do that, we have to ensure that we have, we're working with some valid receiver here and a valid, um, what if this was nil, right? Um, and somebody created a nil pointer and was trying to call right on it. So we have to check receiver, make sure it's not nil, and we certainly want to make sure that our um, p is not zero, because if it's a zero slice or a nil slice, we can't read anything from it. So let's do just that. We can say if um, you know uh, r equals to nil, 
then return zero within um we're in here to process any bytes and from the errors um package create a new error and we can say invalid rece um, receiver okay seems like good enough for me and then um we can say and so let's test that and see um what about if um we had something like pointer, p is a pointer. Of course, when we run that now, that's um, a nil pointer, as you can see, and now we have invalid receiver. So that works great. All right, and so the next one I'd like to do is, I'm gonna kind of cheat here real quick, I copy and paste it, and I wanna check and make sure that not p is nil, because it's a slice, so this works also, zero is not equals the length of um, p is not zero so even if it, it's not zero or even if it's zero we know length of p is still going to give return zero and and so uh whether it's nil or just there's not it's empty and so we're gonna ins write inside parameter right um, p r a m e t r parameter okay can't spell there okay and so this also is going to work for us if data um, somehow happens to be um, nil or empty. So I'm not gonna test that because I know that's gonna work also. All right, so if we're here, we know at least P is not empty, so it must have at least um, one byte. So what we can do is then say, well, the length of name, right? Or name length, whatever you wanna call it. Name length in terms of byte is equals to if we cast this to an int, uh, you'll see why I want to cast it to an int, and p of 0. So I take the first thing, this, and I cast it to an int. Now, once I cast that to an int, it's just a matter of me checking to see now if p contains the rest of the data. And so to check that, I know that oh, it says it must have 5 bytes for the name, plus this one byte, so really, I wanna make sure that P, at least in terms of if it has the name length, is whatever name length is plus one. So, if, right, if, um, if one plus our name length, or you wanna do it, plus one, is if it's greater than length of P, then, um, I know that P doesn't have enough, right? So if the number of bytes I really expect to be in there is greater than length of P, then um, it's invalid. And in that case, um, I know that I have another error on my hand. And this time it's insufficient um, data, right? Insufficient for name. And so, Otherwise, if if this is not the case where how many bytes I'm looking for is not greater than thing, then I know that I can loop around and create, um, I can actually take these bytes. So this is offset zero, and this is one. And then here, in this case, since this is zero, then where my string ends, is whatever the length is plus one, right? So this is zero, one, two, three, four, five. So that's the five there. But when we take in slices, we know that we gotta go one beyond, so it's actually six. So it's the length plus one. So I know that here, if I'm at if I'm here, I can say p that name is equals to create a string using the slice of bytes from here, right? So where do we want to start? We know that we want to start at one. I don't want to include that first byte five. And how far do I have to go? I have to go to six, right? Because I have five plus one. Well, I can't hard code that. I have to um, compute it. So that's what's always going to be, regardless of you know whatever this value changed to based on what it's encoding, right? It, again, if this changes, the number of bytes here have to change. Okay. All right. So. Um, let's see. So at this point, I have 
I believe I have extracted the name. So let's see if that is true. So if I rerun my code, hmm, undefined string. Ah, so I made a mistake somewhere. Here we go. And let's save that and rerun it. Ah, what is this? Has no field or method name. P that name. Undefined type bytes. Ah, or is that? Ah, da, 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 da. Um, hmm, what is it saying? P underscore. Um, Hmm. Oh, why, 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 why? If I get in string, create a string from p one colon um, name length plus one. Yep, that is correct. Um, so take a slice of from one and then stop um, at essentially the age. So go up to there, but include the one before. So, and then I want to say P that name. Oh, I can't use P. P, uh, P is <laughs> my data that's coming in. I need R, my receiver. No one they send me, P doesn't have a type. But uh, So I need R, ah, silly me. And then I run that and look at that. I've been able to extract the name and that name is Bobby. So this must be capital B, this must be O, and this is lowcase b, lowcase b, and this is y. And now we know the next one is the age, right? Bobby um, is 35. Well, are we gonna get that? Well, we're gonna say, again, we have to check because we don't know how, how big p is. Maybe p is just long enough to have encoded this part. So we have to check and see if p has this other part. So if p has one more byte, then we know we can take out the age, right? So we wanna check and say if two or name length plus two is greater than um you know essentially uh if it's greater than length of p that means we don't have enough so i'm gonna copy this and i'm gonna paste it here and say insufficient data for h right so if that is the case, I will return. But if um, I don't return, that means I can say R. I go for type P again. R that age, right? I remember our age is what? It's an unsigned eight bit int, right? So that guy, uh, unsigned eight bit int, is P. And where's the offset we want to get? Well, let's look again. It's zero one two three four five six so it's the same place that we stopped previously so this is going to be copy that into here and let's check and see if we're oh this is from old this is old code so let me take that out and so let's see if we've gotten the h35 and i rerun it and there we have the h35 and the last bit is to get the search security number well, we know the search security number is always going to be 11 characters. So really, what we want to see is do we have 11 characters remaining? So one way of doing that is to simply check and say, if length of, um, if 11, 11 is equal, that's all we need it to be. We don't want extra. So if 11 is at least less than equal, to p length of p right but not all of p but we want is p taking a slice from name length plus two which is essentially so if name length plus one took us here name length plus two is going to take us here which makes sense because name length is how many bytes for the name plus two more which is one for the length of the how many this and one for the age so name length plus two which is a slice from here to the end. So if we can do a slice from there to the end and whatever that remaining slice is, if that is greater than or, e or equals to 11, then we know that all we have space for the social security number. We have enough for the social security number. So if it's not, then it's insufficient data for social security number, right? And we can do this to get the social security number. And so 
we can say social security number is equals to um, this is going to be slice of this guy to colon name length plus 2 plus 12 well actually um, if there's more in there we don't want to get it get at it right so we're gonna do 12 and the reason why we're doing 12 is because um, name length plus actually plus 11 yep not plus not plus 12 is plus 11 so we want to start here and then this is where the 11 bytes start and then we add 11 because we know that that's the size now what we should probably do is instead of art coding this as 11 right is that we should make a constant call it um search security length okay and then up here we do you know some constant const search security number length is equals to 11 okay and so now our code is a little bit better than what it was before and so now let's run this and see and so now we should have completely ah missing return at end of function uh let's see are we missing a return where did our return go ah, okay so if we get all the way to the end here then we can return the length of p the number of bytes we consume um and nil this is not exactly correct either because if our buffer was much longer we didn't consume all those bytes so we really only consume um you know we really consume so security number of bytes plus two which is the number of bytes up front for tell us how long our name is plus the age byte plus the number of bytes in the string name so that's how many bytes we actually consume okay and that allows our um, interface that if we have a super long buffer we could return back how much we consume so you could know where to start processing the next set of data okay all right so this should be correct um, again I gotta find some time to fix my thing and so hmm look at this um, we don't have an error but we do not have the bytes either for our social security number so that is interesting um, R that social security number is equals to string name length plus two colon slice name length plus two plus social security number length and why don't we have a um, thing so I'm gonna do a little bit debugging here and I'm going to print this to the screen to see what kind of which bytes were printed here so fmt that print lin and I want to see what exactly was printed out here. Um, return, okay, comma. I don't know why it's saying that. Oh, well, again, my stuff is messed up. All right, so if I print that out, it's not getting all the way there, but if it's not getting all the way here, and it's returning before, I should be getting an error message Hmm. Wait a second. Let me think it is through. Error. So this is the person before we call it error nil. Person name Bobby and social security number. Um, why am I am I getting here? I have to see if I'm getting here. FMT that print lane. Oh, I can't tell the error. Da 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 da. -da. And so this is gonna tell me if my code is even getting to that point. So run this and it is not getting there so something is very 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 wrong and so let me see what did i do did i miss miss make a mistake oh there it is this this return that i was looking for is all the way up here ah no use no point yep and so i can test again and go should warn that oh the statement is not reachable and so yes so i'm reaching um, so if, if, if insufficient data for social security number so now um, I want to know why is there is that insufficient data so if I do that or that 
um, let's do this. Let's do buff colon equals, and then I'm going to take this, all of this, put it in here, and then do buff. And then um, if that's buff representing from where the social security number starts, then when I write to get the social security number, um, well, I can leave that for now, but um, now I need to print that out and see what it is. So I'm going to take this up here and see what's in buff. So let's see what's in buff. Let's see. All right, so let's see what's in buff. Why is there not enough data? So, okay, so buff supposed to start from 57, which is here, that, 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 that. So we're supposed to have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, right? Correct? So this is 35, the age. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. So that's 11 characters. And so buff is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 10, 11. So 11. So then it means that my test here is somehow wrong. So 11. So you want to test that. Ah, if S is, is length is less than or equals to this. No, it's not less than. If length is, um, if, uh, if length is greater than the length of the buffer, which means how much stuff is left in the buffer, then is when I have an error. <laughs> Otherwise, I, I do not have an error. And know that we've actually cleaned up our code by putting the rest of the thing in buff. And again, remember, this could go on because it might be another person object um, packed in the, in the buffer. Um, so you might have more than one. What we can do is simply use buff here instead and clean up our code and say that going to buff and we want from the beginning um, to, you know, next 11 um, bytes is, is what we're saying. We want from zero to, again, this is going to be 11, so you can take from zero to 10, really, which is exactly what we want, because this is zero, one, two, blah, 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 and this is, so it's going to end at 10, right? Because we just counted that it was 11, so, and so now, when it takes that and our return here in terms of many bytes we consume is still correct. And so when we run this now again, I expect it to work. And there we go. We have extracted the social security. Now, how do we know this is correct? Well, nine, nine. So this must be nine. This must be nine. One, 49 is one. 45 is a dash. 57, again, nine. And then zero. Well, if 49 was 1, then 48 is 0, okay? And it means that 49, for this is 0, 1, 2, 3. And there we go, 0, 1, 2, 3. So this is correct. So we have correctly decoded this byte buffer that we receive over the network, in air quotes, or from a file, into a valid person object. And that was the objective. I know this was a little bit long, but this is not as contrived as you might think. Like some of the other ones I said was kind of contrived, but still very use, usable. And I've actually written things like that that track how many bytes or count how many times something happened. And this um, is definitely things I've done before with protocols when you receive bytes over the wire or you have to take something and turn it into bytes. We're going to see that in the right in the reader part. But here we just imagine that oh, we already had something, a person that was turned into bytes formatted this way and then know it was us, our work to decode it. Now I have to caution you that this code is not is very fragile and um, it's very fragile for a number of reasons. Um, we have no way of um, knowing at all this was actually a valid person as we start we just go through and we keep turning these bytes into you know but 
somebody could come in and change this from you know 98 to 97 and all of a sudden uh, when I rerun this um, I don't have Bobby but I have Bobby right so uh, so there are ways to get around how you encode this and 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 ensure that oh you can check some it and all that sort of stuff but we are gonna ignore all those and just go with this rather simple thing so while I said this is not quite contrived um, it is definitely a foundation upon which you can which you can start building up more things I don't want this video to be much longer so I'm gonna cut it here but I hope you sort of see now that what we have done is implemented the IO writer interface for person and when we write some byte it was stored into a person object how do we know is because we had a person here that didn't add anything and we was we were able to um, turn some byte into that person a valid person now if even if this was a p at um, some value stored well of course we have overwritten it but again we're simulating that oh, we've had some bytes and we're trying to write it into a person and that's exactly what we did it's not the best way it's not the only way but it is a way and it works all right i'll end this here thanks for your time thanks for your patience thanks for your support um keep spreading the word hit that subscribe button if you haven't hit the thumbs up if you like what's going on if you have you don't like something definitely leave a comment but i appreciate the thumbs up and um you know spreading the word and definitely subscribe if you haven't subscribed but if you like the video definitely hit thumbs up um can't get enough of that see you in the next chapter when we're going to talk about the io reader um, interface and then of course we're going to do the same thing work through it with some simple examples and learn about it all right see you in the next video take care have a great day bye